Synthesis of Potassium Ferrioxalate. In this lab, you'll be synthesizing potassium trioxalato ferrate from ferrous ammonium sulfate. You'll start by reacting ferrous ammonium sulfate with a solution of oxalic acid to form ferrous oxalate. The ferrous oxalate is then washed and reacted with hydrogen peroxide and potassium oxalate to form the product potassium trioxalato ferrate. A side product is formed in this last reaction which is ferric hydroxide, however it reacts with excess oxalic acid and potassium oxalate to form the final product as well. This is the apparatus you'll need for this lab. The thermometer can be found at the front of the lab. Everything else can be found in your drawer. All of the solid chemicals you need to weigh out can be found near the top loading balances. The oxalic acid, hydrogen peroxide, and ethanol can be found in the TA fume hood. First, heat up about 50 milliliters of water on your hot plate. While your water is heating, go to the top loading balance and tear your weighing bottle. Weigh out approximately 4 grams of ferrous ammonium sulfate. The weight does not have to be exactly 4 grams, but make sure to record the mass you measured. This will be important when calculating your theoretical and actual yield at the end of the lab since this will be the mass of your reagent. Take the ferrous ammonium sulfate back to the fume hood. Measure out 15 milliliters of warm water you have been heating in a graduated cylinder. Add the ammonium sulfate to an empty 100 milliliter beaker and to that add warm water. If the solid doesn't dissolve, stir the solution. Go to the TA fume hood and measure out 15 milliliters of oxalic acid. Cover the solution and take it back to your fume hood. Gently add the oxalic acid to your reaction mixture. Place it on the hot plate and stir the solution. Heat up the solution until it is boiling. Remove it and allow the yellow precipitate to settle. This is your ferrous oxalate. Meanwhile, heat up approximately 75 to 85 milliliters of water. This will be used to wash your precipitate and dissolve the potassium oxalate for the next step. Decant the reaction mixture making sure to dispense only the liquid and not the yellow precipitate from your beaker. It's okay if there is still a slight bit of liquid left in your reaction mixture. After decanting, measure out 25 milliliters of the hot water you were heating using a graduated cylinder and add it to your yellow precipitate. Let the precipitate settle again and then decant the solution. Repeat the step once more. Congratulations! You have now completed the first step of the synthesis and have successfully created ferrous oxalate the yellow solid forming in your reaction vessel. While the solution is settling, prepare your potassium oxalate solution. Measure out approximately 3 grams of your potassium oxalate on the top loading balance and dissolve it in 15 milliliters of hot water. Gently add the potassium oxalate solution to the yellow ferrous oxalate solution and place it on the hot plate and stir. You should notice the solution turning into an orange-red color. At this point, you can clamp your thermometer to the retort stand. Turn off the hot plate and allow the mixture to cool down. Obtain hydrogen peroxide from the TA fume hood. Pipe at 7 milliliters into a graduated cylinder. Lower the thermometer into the solution and make sure the temperature is below 40 degrees. Once it is, use the pasture pipette to slowly add the hydrogen peroxide to the solution. You'll notice the solution bubbling while you're adding the peroxide, and that's alright, but make sure the temperature doesn't go above 40 degrees. You'll notice a brownish red color forming in the solution, which is your ferrous hydroxide. Turn the hot plate back on and let the solution simmer. While the reaction mixture is simmering, obtain 5 milliliters of oxalic acid in a graduated cylinder and add it to the simmering reaction. You'll notice the color of the solution gradually changing to green. If the solution doesn't change in color, then you should add more oxalic acid drop by drop using a clean pasture pipette until it changes to green. 
during the entire operation, you should be keeping the solution on the hot plate at a gentle simmer. Congratulations, you have successfully synthesized your product. The brown precipitate that formed after adding the hydrogen peroxide is the ferric hydroxide, and the green solution represents the trioxalato ferrate ions. Now you need to recrystallize the trioxalato ferrate to form your potassium trioxalato ferrate trihydrate. Now we are going to crystallize the product. Take the solution off the hot plate and let it cool down to room temperature. Once cooled, add 10 milliliters of ethanol and place the solution in an ice bath to crystallize your product. While waiting for crystallization, assemble your vacuum apparatus. Ensure that the tubing it used is thick and attached to the yellow vacuum outlet. The flask should be securely clamped. Turn the vacuum on all the way using the yellow knob outside the fume hood. You should be able to feel the suction by gently placing your hand on the Buckner funnel. Then, use a few milliliters of cold ethanol to wet the filter paper before transferring your product onto it. This will help ensure a seal between the filter paper and the Buckner funnel. It is possible that your product won't precipitate after a while and that's fine. There are two crystallization techniques that can accelerate the process. The first technique that you should do is scratching. Gently scratch the inside surface of the beaker with a glass rod where the solution meets the air. If scratching doesn't work, then you can use seeding. Borrow a tiny bit of product from your lab partner and add it to the solution. If successful, you should see some crystals being formed. You can also use ice instead of crystals if you can't find anyone who has product yet. Once your product has precipitated, you can now proceed to filtering it. Pour your crystals through the Buckner funnel while the vacuum is on and let your crystals dry. Once your crystals dry, add a few milliliters of ethanol to your crystals uniformly to wash them from any excess filtrate. Once your product is dry, disconnect the tube from the flask, not from the fume hood, and turn off the vacuum. You can proceed with weighing your yield. Weigh an empty plastic bag on the top loading balance and record the mass. Open the plastic bag and place it in a small beaker. Gently transfer the product and the filter paper into the bag. Remove the filter paper and scratch off any residual product into your bag. Weigh the product plus the plastic bag. The yield you have obtained will be the difference between the weight of the plastic bag and the weight of the product plus the plastic bag. After synthesizing your product, calculate your percent yield by dividing your actual yield by your theoretical yield and multiplying it by 100. Once you have done this, label your product sheet as shown.